What's up everybody, welcome to episode number 59 of Weekend Review. My name is Sean, and on this week's show we're going to talk about the LEGO Movie 2, the video game, the Yoshi's Crafted World demo, and we'll look forward to this week's new releases. We'll start this week with the Yoshi's Crafted World demo, and we'll start because it's a fairly short impressions of a demo. Um, it's kind of interesting because Nintendo kind of came out of nowhere, and one, they released the um, the release date of Yoshi's Crafted World just randomly one day on Twitter. It comes out on March 29th, and I believe that they did that right after, like a couple days after I had already picked the games I was excited for that there for the first quarter. And that really sucked because I would have put this at number one on my list. I am so excited about this game, and I'm glad that we got a chance to play it. They kind of stealth released this demo as well. Um, I mean, as stealthfully as you can get when they, like, tell you during a Nintendo Direct. So maybe not stealth is the right way, but they did just drop a demo, and it contained one level, and I had a really good time with it. Obviously, I'm excited for the game, and it felt good to get my hands on it. A lot of the Yoshi games after Yoshi's Island, which is one of my favorite games of all time, are they feel really easy, or they don't feel quite right, or they don't feel, like, they just don't feel like they're fun to play, and playing this i played with ashley and you can actually watch the uh video of it we streamed it on i believe it was last thursday we did that and then we did more lego movie 2 which we're going to talk about here in just a minute after playing the one level available in the demo i somehow am even more excited for this game i was at probably like an eight where i was like very excited but i had some reservations about it um i just wasn't sure if the game was going to be for me and after playing this like i'm at like a nine or even a ten um, I can't wait for this game to come out. It has what I'm looking for in this game. It has all the red coins. It has the flowers you have to collect. You have to get through all of the, uh, get through the whole level with all of your hearts intact, which is very reminiscent. All three of those, uh, elements are reminiscent of Yoshi's Island, which again is a game I love so very dearly. And there are even more features that weren't available in the demo. You can't pick your Yoshi color, which it looks like, um, just based on the screenshot. It's, uh, green is like the main color and they had like a baby blue and a pink and they even I think showed the rest of the colors at the end of the demo um, which included like orange and purple and stuff like that so that's really good I like that you have the ability to change different Yoshi colors you don't have to play strictly as green I will because green's my favorite color and the game also contains like little bonus objectives so we played through the first level got all the flowers got all the red coins awesome when it bumps you out of the level, you talk to another character who goes like, hey, I need like five cows on this first level. If you can find five cows, I'll give you a reward. I'm not exactly sure what that reward is because that was one of the features that wasn't available. Yoshi can have costumes in this game, and I think that's what this was related to, but I'm not 100% sure um, because, again, that feature was grayed out. You weren't able to look at it. So you go back into the level, and you find the five cows in the background, um, and that was another thing I, I kind of skipped over, but... Another aspect that is reminiscent of the first Yoshi game, and I'm sure it's in a lot of the Yoshi games, is the egg throwing. But what I liked about this is you actually get to pick where it aims, and there's like depth to it. So Yoshi's Island is a flat 2D platformer. This is a 2D platformer that has 3D elements. There are sections of this game where you get to an intersection and you can go forwards or you can go backwards. And I thought that was really interesting. It gives it like a little bit more depth, but you can also pick where you want to throw your eggs. And not only is that helpful with enemies, because sometimes when you are in Yoshi's Island, you have to wait for it because it goes, you know, up and down. Now you can just pick and shoot it right there, but you can also push it back into the like set and you can knock houses over and knock into shy guys that they have back there. And some of the shy guys are holding little coins and they're red coins. And there's even stuff in the very front of the level. And it's just, it's a design that I really liked. So going back in and looking for those cows was like another objective. And once you get that objective, you are done with the level. You get to bounce out as soon as you're done with it. And if you have, which one of us I think Ashley did, Ashley had full hearts, so that counted towards the flowers. So basically, you get the five flowers in the level, and then for every other thing that's completed, you get another flower. So there are a lot of flowers to be grabbed in this game. And you also get to play these levels backwards. So once you got done, it was like, do you want to rescue the Poochie Pups? And we're like, heck yes, we want to rescue the Poochie Pups. And the level goes in reverse, so it flips it, and you walk back through the level that you just did looking for little poochie pups and what's really cool about those is poochie is in the first is in yoshi's island and it's just the one 
like one Poochie. The Poochie pups are different colors. So there was a black, a pink, and a uh, blue that we had to go find in the level. They're pretty easy to find. There's a time limit. So you, if you can get it under, I think it's two and a half minutes in this particular level. Uh, if you can find all three of them and get to the goal, that's another flower. And it's just cool to see the level flip and look at it from a different angle. I thought that was really neat. It looks like from the trailer that they play at the end of the game, you're going to be able to hit switches and flip it anyway, like or at any point during the game. Uh, so it's not just going to be like you have to play the level all the way through and then come back through after the level's done. It looks like you'll be able to flip it every once in a while. I thought this was a really great demo. It was one level. It was pretty short. Um, we spent probably 30 or so minutes with it, and we had a lot of fun, and it makes me even more excited to play the game when it releases later this month. The second game on this week's show is the LEGO Movie 2 The Video Game, which is a game that actually qualifies as a pleasant surprise. I was very excited about this game, so excited, in fact, Ashley and I did a creative countdown stream building LEGOs in anticipation of this game, uh, but I wasn't quite expecting how much I would like it. The LEGO games follow a pretty similar formula. You have Typically, you have an open world in the more recent games. You have like an open world aspect. You jump into levels. You go from point A to point B, solving puzzles and collecting various things like red bricks, gold bricks, character tokens, studs, solving puzzles, and depending on the game, fighting maybe little mini bosses here and there. Uh, but this game has like a one big difference right out of the box instead of those linear levels that are completely unrelated to the open world they're all one thing which i wasn't expecting like i didn't know that that was going to be the way this game was like across the board i thought maybe they would introduce some elements here or there that happen in the open world of like here's a little tutorial you unlock this character here so on and so forth what i didn't expect was and if you watch the streams you probably saw this was uh, basically giving you a main quest that has multiple points, like probably like, I don't know, 10 points maybe, probably more, but we'll, we'll use the number 10 for just for uh, explanatory's sake. Having 10 points, having you follow through with that, but having the ability or the option to go do different side quests that are spread throughout this little mini open world. And that was really nice. I like that it's fused together in that way where a lot of the time you're going to spend in the open world anyway. So why not just put the main story missions in like that? That feels like a natural extension of what the Lego games have done anyway. Maybe some points here or there where it's like you enter this door and it loads another area. But this, for the most part, is just all encapsulated in the one area so throughout the story of the game you go to different planets it follows the plot of the movie for the most part it changes up a couple things because you need two characters typically with the lego games that's what they give you um so instead of everyone getting kidnapped spoilers alerts for the spoiler alert for the lego movie 2 instead of everyone getting kidnapped everyone but Emmett and wild style get kidnapped and you have to go find them across the galaxy after everyone is kidnapped you follow a few more plot points or quest points um, and then you have the ability to go to other worlds the trick is that you need to collect a certain number of purple bricks called master bricks and that substitutes in for gold bricks in the uh, in most of the other titles once you have the required number of master bricks you can go to different worlds and it follows more or less follows the plot of the movie some stuff has changed here or there but that's totally fine um you even stop in some locations that they don't really spend much time in in the movie uh, and those each have their own like main quest and side quests and they each have their own shops where you can buy new items. This game also has smaller mini planets that relate more to the first movie, which I thought was a nice little addition. The first planet you go to, or the first smaller planet I should say that you go to, is the Old West from the first movie. And it's an even more manageable planet because it's it only has 25 bricks instead of 50 bricks. And the, the uh, main mission is a lot shorter and the side quests aren't as many. And it's just, it's like a cool little throwback to the first movie. There are six of those little worlds that are somewhat related to the first movie if you take a peek at the achievements uh there are and this is a spoiler alert for this particular video game you can go to classic bricksburg from the first movie planet unikitty which i would assume is from the cartoon and a few other places i had a lot of fun running around the planets doing the main quest but also getting distracted by the side stuff there are lots of uh, a lot of the random mini missions are super simple they're pretty repetitive because sometimes it's like just beat up this number of enemies or um go find this like a little fetch quest like go find this and bring it back or like little races um 
So, I mean, they can get a little redundant, but everything's short enough to where it's not really that much of a problem. You can also find hidden chests in the area, and they contain bricks to build things, uh, studs to buy things, and relics to unlock things. And this is the one change that I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I like the idea of it, but I don't necessarily like the execution of it because I think they had in previous games a better way to unlock stuff. Basically what happens is you get relics. You get a blue relic, a green relic, or a purple relic, and they unlock various things. They unlock stuff to build with, they unlock characters, they unlock uh, little weapons that your character can use, and the like the weapons and the building stuff is like totally fine because I don't really care about that. But the characters is where I'm a little worried about how this is being implemented. Um, in previous LEGO titles, you would go do specific races or specific missions in the open world areas, and it would unlock a specific character. You would also unlock a lot of characters just by completing levels, so it felt like your roster built out a lot faster. In this game, because it's so randomized, it feels like I'm not getting the characters quickly enough. And what's really frustrating about it is the fact that because it's random, like I don't get to pick who I want. So they have Watermelon Man, which if you watch the stream, I was very excited to get in those mystery Lego Lego Movie 2 minifig packs. And I really wanted Watermelon Man to play as in the game. But because I can't pick, I have to hope that the game praise you are in Jesus. I hope I have to hope that the game gives me the character that I want. The biggest problem with this is the consistency at which you get duplicates. I have a ton of characters left that I need to unlock and I'm getting far too many duplicate characters including a couple of times when I unlocked the same character back to back. Duplicates in a row of the exact same character. That's not fun. And from a completionist standpoint, and this is where it kind of gets like a little like nitpicky, from a completionist standpoint, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this 100% because what I'm worried about is basically what happened to me when I played L.A. Noir, where I was looking for one car. I, was, I needed one car for the 100% completion, and I couldn't find it. I scoured for hours and hours. I must have spent like 15 hours looking for this one car, and I finally got it, and I had to yell like, somebody come pinch me, I can't believe it's finally happening because I spent forever on this. And that's my worry with this. Once you start to get down to those single digit characters, you're going to have so much opportunity for duplicates that it's going to be a big pain in the butt. It's not even a skill thing. It's just you hoping that RN Jesus sends you the character that you need through the video game console. And that like it sucks because I'd so much rather like look up a guide online and be like, hey, you unlock this character by doing this mission and then hustle over and then use Watermelon Man forever because Watermelon Man is great. That makes the 100% feel like more of a chore than an achievement. I like completing the Lego games and it always felt like I had a fighting chance with it. With this, I feel like it's going to be a lot of time spent buying, buying more relic packs, opening those up, hoping that you get the character you need running around the world, getting more studs, buying more relic packs, and that cycle is going to get really old really quickly. We also ran into a pretty big problem when we were trying to open the relics in that when one person is opening the relics, and this is specifically a split screen, uh, split screen issue, when Ashley was trying to open the relics during the, during the stream, it locked up about four or five times and it would say like current underscore rank when I was out and about in the open world collecting things. So something about that the game doesn't like. It locks up. You have to hard uh, hard exit the game and restart. And fortunately it didn't cause too much of a loss of progress. But if you are playing this game and you're playing it specifically in split screen, just be aware that that's been or that is a problem that I have encountered. Overall, even though I have a couple of gripes with it, I think this is a great addition to the LEGO video game franchise, and I really like what they're doing as far as taking the story missions and putting them in an open world setting. I think that's a really interesting decision. I didn't expect it to be like that, but I'm glad that it is. It feels like a natural evolution of the LEGO video game franchise. Um, it's... I mean, it's a Lego game. It's This isn't going to win you over. If you don't like Lego games, you're not going to care about this. If you do, I think it's worth a shot. It's a fun, colorful game that I really enjoy playing and is one of those franchises that I like coming back to 
Uh, hopefully the completion isn't as big of a pain in the butt as I think it's going to be, but I'd really just like to go play that now if I could. So we'll get on with the rest of the show and then I'm going to go play more Lego game. Crap, I have to edit it. And then for something just a little bit different because I have started streaming, um, I wanted to let you know what the video release schedule on the channel is going to look like. Um, hopefully, should everything go right and fing cross your fingers so that I can get this all figured out and set the way I want it. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is going to be the Creative Countdown slash Lego Movie 2 Part 1 uh, live stream. On Thursday, Part 2 of the Lego Movie. On Friday, Part 3 of the Lego Movie. On Saturday, Part 4 of the Lego Movie. Um, streams will all go up. Sunday is going to be Round 1 of March Mascot Madness Part 3. And then Monday is going to be part four of March Ma Mascot Madness round one. Speaking of March Mascot Madness, the streams will resume this Thursday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 6 p.m. So be sure to catch the back half of the round of 64. It's been great so far. We had our best game Sunday afternoon between Texas Tech and Wisconsin. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a big goof. Uh, come stop by the stream. That's twitch.tv slash Rex. Uh, currently, a four-year-old is winning in the standings, so find out if he continues his reign of dominance, and it is dominance. I think he's 75% so far, so I might be out $10. Finally, on this week's show, we'll look forward to this week's new releases. Lots of stuff on Blu-ray, Creed 2, The Favorite, which was one of my top movies last year. Ben is back, The Standoff at Sparrow Creek, Vo Lux, and Instant Family. Uh, in theaters, Captain Marvel. Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus were announced for March 2019. Games with Gold is an Adventure Time game on the Xbox One. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, that one's on the 16th. That's a great game, you should play it. Star Wars Republic Command, and that's available from the 1st through the 15th. That's an original Xbox game, so they're continuing that, uh, that streak, I guess, with old Star Wars games for the original Xbox on Games with Gold. That's totally fine. Uh, and then from the 16th through the 31st, that's because we're in March, uh, is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And that's uh, obviously backwards compatible with the Xbox One. PlayStation Plus is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered. That's a really big game. And The Witness, there are only two games because last month was the last opportunity for PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita games. I thought maybe they should add one more, maybe two more, but this is a pretty good list to get it started. It is only two games, but Modern Warfare Remastered is a great remaster, and people really loved The Witness. It, it scored very well critically. There were no Game Pass announcements uh, just yet, which is kind of surprising considering that it's the 4th of March, but they have been a little more flexible with when they announce that stuff. They typically only announce later in the month. It's a whole mess, so we'll just skip it for now. The games this week, uh, Beat Cop hits on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, Move or Die, which is a party game, hits on PlayStation 4, and then The Occupation, which was one of the games that I talked about in my uh, like month in preview. Uh, is one of the five games I was excited for this quarter. It missed its first date out in February. I believe it was February 5th, and it only slipped a month to March 5th. Uh, so it comes out today as of posting. Um, and I'm so excited about this game that I'm actually going to give it a try and stream it later tonight. That should be about 6, maybe 7, over on twitch.tv slash Rex. You can follow me on Twitter at Rex. Big surprise. And... Um, I'll have more information for you. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Week in Review. If you like the content, scroll on down, hit that subscribe button, and then when you're there, you can scroll on down just a little bit more and leave me a comment. Are you going to go see Captain Marvel this weekend? Uh, are you going to pick up anything on Blu-ray? Are any of the games I've listed piquing your interest? I don't know. You have to tell me. Otherwise, you know, if you don't, that's totally fine. Be sure to stop by the streams over on twitch.tv slash Rex, and we'll see you next week. Bye.